Hey everyone, welcome to a thin walled pressure vessel example. So we should be excited about this one, it's going to be a good one. So the question is how strong must the weld be on this thin walled pressure vessel that's pictured here in A, direct tension and B, in shear. So we're going to be analyzing this thin walled pressure vessel. It has rigid end plates that are being loaded in the middle with the load P is 250 kilonewtons. It's got a pressure of 4 MPa. And let's just verify that this can indeed be treated as a thin walled pressure vessel. We'll do the radius divided by the thickness. We get 50. That's greater than 10. We know from our previous video anything greater than 10 you're good to go. You got less than 5% error treating it like that. Okay, so let's draw out our, our plane stress element on the face here. We've got our equations down on the bottom left. And these seem easy enough to apply, so we'll just get going. Sigma 1, PR over T. We already figured out R over T, so 4 MPa times 50 is 200 MPa. So that would be the hoop stress, uh, or sometimes called the circumferential stress. Okay, then Sigma 2. A little bit trickier here. We know we have the PR over 2T, but there's this extra term here, right? We have the, the load, which is acting in this direction. And um, just to make it easy on ourselves, we'll write it out. So it's going to be PR over 2T minus P over A, the area of the, the thin wall pressure vessel wall. So that's going to be 100 MPa, half of sigma 1, minus P over A. So P is 250,000 newtons, and A, we're going to get this in millimeters squared. Uh, the radius is the inside diameter, but it, so the area can be approximated by pi, pi D times T, so pi 2RT. And I'm plugging this in as we go. I already solved this. So 100 MPa minus 250,000 over 7,854, 68.17 MPa. So that's going to be our sigma 2. We can write that into our plane stress element. We saw for sigma 1 is 200. Okay, so now um, we, we just want to note here, these are the principal stresses, right? Because there's no shear on these faces. But after we rotate it to be in line with the weld, there is going to be a shear stress. So we can solve for the sigma average, as well as the radius of our Morse circle. Sigma average, just the average of the two, 130. 4.1 MPa and similarly R can be computed as the difference between the two divided by 2 65.9 MPa. Now with these transformations things can get kind of tricky so the best approach is really to draw out the Morse circle and, and by drawing it out we can really visualize the transformation and the angle change and, and which face is actually being uh, being adjusted um, you'll see that as we go on. So let's just start plotting our points here. We got our, our rightmost face, our sigma 1 face, 200 uh, and no shear stress, so 200, 0. Then we got the 68.2 with no shear stress. That's sigma 2. And, and sigma average right in the middle of the two. Then we know R is equal to our tau max. So we'll give this our best shot here to connect the dots and draw this circle. And that's kind of brutal, but it'll have to do. I, um, I'm not the best circle drawer, if you haven't already clued in. <laughs> so, that's our circle. Now let's figure out our angle rotation and which direction it is. So we can draw the weld line across the element here, and we can see where the angle 31 degrees is. So now let's draw a rotated element with what we're after, the, the normal stress and the shear stress. So we'll put that on that face. And we can see that it's actually the sigma 2 face, the rightmost face, that's being rotated 31 degrees. In more circle, we have to times all our angles by 2. So 2 theta is 62 degrees. And I've highlighted the, the dot in, with yellow there because it's, it's that face that we're rotating through um, in a counterclockwise direction, this 62 degrees on the more circle. Okay. And just a reminder, folks, I'm going a little quick here, but it's a good idea to pause things and really digest them every so often. Make sure you're tracking with me. Make sure we're doing this together, all right? 
because uh, I need your help as much as you need mine. All right, <laughs> we're a team. Okay, so now we're going to write our equation for this sigma, this value we're after, but we're not going to use any equations from a book or something. We're actually just going to use our intuition and we're going to look at the Morse circle. Okay, this is a foolproof way. We're going to basically derive our own equation by looking at the Morse circle. So the sigma, you can think about it as we're starting as from the sigma average spot and we're going to subtract r times cos 2 theta, okay? And that's the 2 theta is just the 62 degrees. It's the theta in the Morse circle. So just from simple trigonometry of that triangle there, we can see that if we start at sigma average and we subtract this distance r cos 2 theta, we'll get our sigma, the one that we want. So 134.1 minus 65.9 times cos 62 gives us, you got to do that in the calculator, can't uh, do that off the top of my head, 103.1 MPa. Now does that make sense? If we look at the Morse circle, it's between the sigma average and, and the uh, sigma min that we had. So yeah, that, that works right there. Let's do the same thing for the shear stress. Tau is r times sine 2 theta, okay? So the cos is for the sigmas or the normal stress. Sines are used for the shear stress. So we can multiply that out. r times sine 2 theta, 65.9 times sine 62 is 58.2 MPa. Okay, so that's it for this example, actually. We have the, the, uh, the strength of the weld that's required in direct tension and shear. And really it wasn't too hard, but we see the importance of drawing or at least visualizing the Morse circle so that we don't even have to remember equations of transformation. We can actually just draw it out and we can, we can see the angle rotation um, and, and we can know which face is actually being rotated. So that's it for the example. Hope you enjoyed it. Questions, comments in the, in, you know, below, you know the drill. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing.